AMD shutting down their app that you were definitely using. Newegg starting to sell refurbished parts and the APUs they're so fast. AMD's got me riled up. Let's get into hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, January 29, 2024. And I just want to thank everybody for allowing me to take a leave of absence last week. Uh, we spent it uh, for my son's Make-A-Wish trip. We got to go to Disney. It was a wonderful time where we did not have to focus on work at all and we could just dedicate an entire week to our son and our family and I am incredibly thankful to have a, a job where I can just do that. I could take a week off and um, just focus on loving my family. And so I appreciate everybody allowing us to kind of ghost hot news last week. Um, I will set up today's video as a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish because the experience that they provided us with last week was um, unforgettable and truly a once in a lifetime experience. We noted so many times on the trip that like one of the reasons it was so amazing was just because of like everything that they put together for you. It helped us to forget a lot of the struggles that we go through on a daily reality with our son and just kind of focus on enjoying time with him, which is not always the case when it comes to trying to make sure we're taking care of him. I'm rambling a little bit. I'm just very thankful for the opportunity to have this job where taking a week off isn't such a big deal. And then also um, for having access to a program like Make-A-Wish, which we worked with Make-A-Wish of Greater Pennsylvania and West Virginia. So if you want to make a donation to them directly, we'll have them linked in the video description. Or I think YouTube has like the Make-A-Wish general organization. Uh, every moment that they provided for us was amazing. And uh, we're very thankful for everything that they did for us. And now I brought in my wife to talk about our vacation just a little bit. It was great. It was way better than we thought it would go because um, it's hard to travel with him. We haven't really done that a lot in the last three years or so, except for to medical appointments, and that doesn't really count. Yeah, any trip longer than a few hours, we have to bring like 16 different medications with us. Yeah, but he did really well, and um, like the trip was really all inclusive, which was pretty fantastic because, um, yeah, it's expensive to go to Disney with five people. Um, but I think like the best part was that. Um, every park that we went to was really accommodating for Emmett and gave us front of the line access and we didn't have to wait and it was just like really uh, disability friendly, autism friendly. Uh, if you want to know more about the struggle that we're going through with our son, you can watch this video right up here. It's very old, a little outdated. We were very naive for uh, the total amount of uh, effort that would have to go into caring for my son back then, but it gives you a good idea of what we're embarking upon now. But appears that people aren't thankful for what AMD was doing for them on the mobile app side of things to switch gears entirely because AMD is ending support for their Link app after six years. This app, I forgot existed. I'm not even sure I knew it existed at any point. Turns out that this was supposed to be a app where you initially reviewed footage that like you captured with AMD software and then eventually turned into something where you could do game streaming kind of like Steam Link or Nvidia's game streaming or something like that but now it's going to be removed because AMD admits that there are better options out on the market for you to be able to use. So I want to know from you were you using AMD's app AMD Link to, to stream dedicated from your AMD graphics card? I I don't know anybody who used this. I didn't even, I, again, I didn't even know it existed. But what I do know exists is today's video sponsor. We have today's video sponsor, Soylent. Soylent is a complete nutrition brand with a science-based take on health and wellness. And no, there are no people in this Soylent, but it is powered by people hard at work to bring the world's most perfect food to you. While me and my team were out in Vegas for CES coverage last week, our schedules were all over the place. And after an entire day of travel and being too busy to eat normally, we were all feeling the effects of not eating healthily. Unfortunately, we didn't bring the Soylent with us because we, did, we didn't think to check it. But we all agree Soylent would have made the busy trip so much easier. Plus, the coffee there wasn't the greatest, so I was missing my favorite flavor, the delicious Cafe Mocha. But aside from being delicious, Soylent offers science-backed nutrition formulated with the perfect blend of macro and micronutrients. Every ingredient has been researched and handpicked to come together as a perfect blend of nutrients for you, ending in a drink that delivers 20 grams of complete plant protein and 28 vitamins and minerals. Or as 
they say it in South Africa, vitamins. Even better than just being healthy, Soylent is also super convenient. Soylent drinks are portable, don't need to be refrigerated, and are shelf stable for over a year. You grab a bottle, crack it open, enjoy your drink, and simply dispose of the bottle. Soylent is a no mess, no cleanup, no brainer. Personally, I also like that Soylent uses sustainable ingredients. As the only food company that boasts the US grown sustainable soy certification, Soylent is committed to using less wasteful production methods and ingredients in their products. So join me and the 40,000 people who voted Soylent product of the year in a Kantar survey in making Soylent a part of your day. The first 500 people who use our link in the video description and code UFDTech30 will save 30% off their first subscription with Soylent. Big thanks to Soylent for sponsoring this video and making sure that I get all of my nutrition in one go. Really appreciate Soylent. And I appreciate a good UI overhaul, which is exactly what Microsoft's bringing to the Windows installer. It's getting its first update since Windows Vista. It's now gonna look slightly more modern, a much cleaner and more modern design. It's now in the Windows 11 Insider Preview build and it it does look a little nicer. That's all I can say. And Intel wants you to know about an update that they're gonna be bringing to their Panther Lake chips, which you might not know what I'm talking about. And that's because Panther Lake comes out after Arrow and Lunar Lake, which are supposed to come out later this year. But Intel wants you to know, this thing's real fast. It's gonna be two times the AI. In 2025, it's gonna double what's not even out yet, which this year we're gonna be tripling the AI performance. So it'll be 6X, the, the, the AI is gonna multiply all over the place. It's just gonna, it's gonna be incredible and everywhere. But unfortunately, it's gonna come with a lot of consequences as well because George Carlin's estate is now suing the comedy channel that released an AI special standup with the comedian's likeness being used and allegedly training data being used from his stand-ups and his comedy specials to make this new hour-long segment. The estate saying that it was unauthorized copies of Carlin's original copyrighted routines and additionally that their AI-generated special is not a creative work. It's a piece of computer-generated clickbait which detracts from the value of Carlin's comedic works and harms his reputation. It is a casual theft of a great American artist's work, which appears to be one of the things that's gonna be played out in the courts in the coming weeks and months, with various different lawsuits. There was a recent op-ed that was made with regards to the fact that AI cannot be profitable if the, all of the training models have to pay for the works that they're actually ingesting into these various models. But in a twist, it turns out, at least according to the defendants in this lawsuit, it actually wasn't AI generated, with them saying that the YouTube video was completely written by one of the members of the YouTube channel who happened to publish this. So it's not quite clear how this is gonna play out, but if this indeed was written, they used AI to, you know, market it and make it seem like it was actually a little bit more than it was, that is obviously happening in tech sectors with companies constantly saying that everything's powered by AI when in reality it's just a regular old algorithm that they've been using for years, but now they get to call it AI. Or it reminds me of those viral posts that were happening a long time ago about like, I trained a bot to read a hundred episodes of the Big Bang Theory and here's the script that it wrote. But in reality, it was just a comedian who was actually writing all of that. And it's not funny if it's a person who does it. It only becomes funny when you think a computer did it. It's a whole mess. We'll keep you updated on how these lawsuits play out. The George Carlin one strikes a note with people who are fans of his work. And I'm curious to see how all of these lawsuits will be happening moving forward. There was also something that was happening with regards to deep fake and AI image generation with with Taylor Swift that was happening on Twitter where they had to st stop searches of Taylor Swift on the platform because of the amount of non-consensual porn that was posted of Taylor Swift with her being deep faked into various different things. So all of this is going to continue to play out in the sphere of the public sector where we are adapting to technologies in real time with a way that's not typically happened in history. A thousand years ago, we were not constantly having to adjust to brand new technologies coming out every single year that redefine how we communicate and establish relationship with each other. So this is going to be messy. It's going to be a wild ride and we'll, we'll keep you updated on all of it here at Hot News. And we're going to keep you updated on the deals. Reese, 
give us your deals after a week off. Yo, hi. Uh, awkward camera angle, but I'm redoing the rest of my room. So there's boxes everywhere and, you know, just get closer, get comfy. It's just for today. And welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. First up today, we have the Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 kit with 16 gigs of RAM running at 3200 megahertz for only $39.99, making $25.01 off. But then we also have the Epo Sennheiser collab with their GSP 600 wide headset, which is only $72.95, making it $76.05 off for one heck of a headset. But then we also have this ASRock Challenger Radeon RX 7800 XT going for only $489.99 with include promo code which is the cheapest i've ever seen it go for and last but certainly not least we're checking out something real cool thanks to our friends and channel sponsors jawa with this ultimate value gaming and streaming pc from forge computers featuring a ryzen 5 3600 and rx 5700 xt 16 gigs of ddr4 and a one terabyte ssd the super balanced build comes out at only 699 dollars making it 50 dollars off but don't forget you can get an additional 10 dollars off your first purchase using code uft10 and hey once again thanks to our friends and channel sponsors jawa for letting us take a look at this don't forget you can find the and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. It turns out Meta thinks it has a sweet deal with the Apple Vision Pro that's being launched on February 2nd. It's gonna cost $3,500, but Meta thinks that this is a great opportunity for them because it's gonna pivot them to be the Android of the VR mixed reality world with them saying that it reinvigorates its $50 billion metaverse effort, which consumers have yet to widely embrace and that the headset category will be validated by the Apple Vision Pro, which is a very, very weird thing for Meta to be saying because you would think that Meta would want the, the category that they have named themselves after to be validated by their own efforts and turns out that you need Apple to, to make it established. I don't really hear Tesla saying that they need Apple to come out with their car in order to validate their EV and self-driving efforts. It's an intriguing move, which I, I think we all can kind of see that it's a slightly sinking ship, but that's also what's happening when it comes to Beeper on their ability to support iMessage with them disabling it entirely. New iMessage connections will no longer be supported. This is coming after Apple users who had Macs that they were using for Beeper to use iMessage, got their Macs banned, so now Beeper is shutting it down and effectively losing the fight against one of the largest companies in the world who doesn't want their proprietary technology, which isn't that much different than other things that are out on the market to, to be used by them. Speaking of that, Tesla announced that they have a $500 million supercomputer that they're gonna be installing in upstate New York in the Buffalo area. The Dojo Supercluster is gonna have $500 million of computing parts to actually train all of the AI models that they have for the self-driving and various different data that they're gonna be collecting, potentially even for their upcoming robot, which is gonna collect all of your data on how you live your life and how it assists you, and it'll process that and send it off to Tesla. It's gonna be great. Obviously, NVIDIA getting a, a big portion of that amount of money from Tesla. Newegg wanting to get more of your money when it comes to refurbished products, with them announcing that they now have the Newegg Refreshed program, which is going to be for them to sell used goods to you that are inspected, cleaned, and tested for 100% functionality, packaged with all essential accessories, value priced, and a 90-day refresh guarantee. You just gotta wonder, how does this exactly work when they sell you a broken motherboard that they don't acknowledge that is broken, and then they blame you for it, and then you have to make a YouTube video that then starts a firestorm of controversy that potentially leads to a few executives leaving the company? What what do you do then? Do you trust Newegg on this? Who knows? But this appears to be one of the reasons why they started their GPU trade-in program that we talked about on Hot News a few months ago, where you could trade in your GPU to Newegg, they would buy it from you, you had to buy a new GPU, it was kind of in injected into you subsidizing the price, but one of the things that I talked about at the time was it didn't make sense with Newegg's current setup because they didn't have a way to actually sell those used cards, and now they do. And Asus is gonna do a second version of the ROG Ally. Mine is sitting right here, and allegedly it's gonna be coming later this year in 2024. We have a lot of year left to go. Asus saying that they're gonna be sticking with Windows and they will most likely launch it this year. There's not much more details than that. An ROG Ally 2 makes a lot of sense. I would love to see an OLED screen on it. I would love to see it be a little thicker like the MSI Claw is because I think the slimness of this is actually one of the downfalls of this device, but I also do have banana hands, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. And 
I'm not taking this with a grain of salt. I'm full diving into the hype. AMD's APU is getting benchmarked on the CPU side, and they are looking mighty fast. The upgrade from Zen 3 to Zen 4 gives you a big boost on the 8000G processors over their 5000G counterparts. Turns out we're getting 30% increases in a lot of these numbers. You can see the 8700G beating the 5700G in single core and multi core performance, despite the fact that it has the same total number of cores. It's not clocked all that that much higher it's like 500 megahertz but it's good to see that these numbers are increasing now on the last episode of hot news we did talk about one of the most disappointing things with the apus is the amount of pci express lanes it's going to have on the bottom section of the ryzen 3 8300g and the ryzen 5 8500g those are only going to have I believe it was four PCI Express lanes. It's gonna be bad. It, and their their M.2 capacity is gonna be two lanes. It's not gonna be good in any way. The 8700G is gonna be fine with eight lanes. I it, That's what I was expecting to happen. So I'm excited for these. They come out on Wednesday. I, I'm looking forward to it. And you probably are looking forward to me responding to comments that you left well over a week ago. We got Cameron coming in saying, blood oxygen being six? Maybe Kyler isn't unviable. He's just in dire need of medical attention. That's it. He'll figure it out eventually, I'm sure. And then Cameron also getting a second updated comment. What the heck? Saying Kyler acts a lot like take your kid to work day. I feel that. Z Shrink saying, I like the idea of a non-standard GPU mounting so long as it keeps the temp down. I need more of this, referring to the uh, sponsor of this. Silverstone Alta F2 in that. We got Chris saying the PCIe implementation of the APUs is an absolute deal breaker. I was so looking forward to having a PCIe Gen 5 16 slot to play with on top of a Gen 5 SSD by four. I resisted all Black Friday temptation holding out for the 8700G. I miff any expectation of 16 lanes on the APU was always hopeful, right? Like the, there is no precedent for that. AMD would have to really go out of their way to install it. And so I hear you if you were betting on it. I'm sorry that that does suck. But also at the same time, AMD like eight lanes was to be expected. And I'm not necessarily disappointed by that. I'm more disappointed on the lower end side of things where they cut it down even more, where the SSDs are even going to struggle. But I'm not going to struggle to continue this episode of Hot News. We'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow to keep you updated on all that then, which then is tomorrow. See you then. Then tomorrow.